Chapter 1. Multiple Opinions Solve Complex Problems If you were to surround yourself with people who think the same as you, who live their lives in the same way as you, who have the same experiences as you, it stands to reason that their views and ideas will probably be very similar to your own. Sure, they may vary slightly, but the general theme and how they view a problem will mirror your own approach. So how does this help with problem solving and spotting issues before they become major? It doesn't. The same attracts the same. If you surround yourself with people who are the same as you, their view of the world will also match yours. Some of the world's biggest problems have confused professionals for years. However, could it be that having multiple views from different diverse groups may create a broader perspective and therefore give an answer to those head-scratching problems? The more diverse the perspectives, the wider the range of potentially viable solutions a collection of problem solvers can find. Philip Tedlock A diverse group creates collective intelligence. This means that everyone's intelligence is pooled together and gives you a far bigger pot of ideas and solutions to work with. This open-ended approach could be all we need to finally crack some of the world's most confusing issues and for businesses to gain greater success around the boardroom tables. More people means more ideas. It could be the most unexpected person who comes up with the problem-solving idea you need. Chapter 2. Beware of your blind spots. Our way of thinking is largely habitual. We develop a view that we consider to be correct, but we fail to take into account our blind spots. It's not possible for a human being to know everything and be able to look at the matter from different perspectives. That means there are always going to be pieces of the puzzle missing, creating holes of possibility. Syed calls this perspective blindness. Blind spots cause you to overlook key pieces of information. Assuming that your view is the correct one and that you don't need to listen to anyone else is a dangerous route to go down. We can all learn a great deal from other people, and their ideas can completely change or adjust our own points of view. When you become stuck in your ways, you are totally unaware of your blind spots, easily becoming stuck in a problem that you can't solve. Do not assume that you know everything. We all have a lot to learn from one another. Chapter 3. Perception Varies from Person to Person Syed talks about a fateful day in 1996 when Osama bin Laden encouraged deadly attacks on the Western world. The CIA didn't take this seriously. Why? Because bin Laden didn't look like a threat. He was dressed in simple clothing with a long, unkempt beard, sitting on the floor of a cave. They underestimated the danger in the biggest possible way. However, they failed to realize that anyone following the Muslim religion would identify the character that bin Laden was trying to play. He based himself on the highest prophet in Islam, showing his followers an image that called out to them. This increased his reach amongst radical Muslims, but caused the CIA to assume he couldn't touch or threaten the USA with such a simplistic approach. Perspectives vary wildly. One person may see no threat in a situation, but someone else could identify a grave consequence looming. But someone else could identify a grave consequence looming. This is a key example of how differing perspectives can change a situation on its head. Failing to do so leads to blind spots, and in this case, bloodshed. Chapter 4. Thinking outside of the box to see the bigger picture. Complex problems cannot be solved by people who are too immersed in the situation. For instance, Syed talks about joining an advisory board for the English Football Association, FA. The men's team had been performing poorly, and the FA wanted to work out why. Had the FA chosen a group of football experts, they would have simply gone over old ground. They could easily pinpoint what the problem was, but how could they bring differing views to the table and show the FA the way forward? So instead, the FA put together a group of very diverse characters, many with no background in football at all, including army personnel, a rugby coach, and a technological expert. By doing this, the FA could explore differing views and perhaps unpick the mysteries of why the men's team was failing on the biggest stage. Diverse groups help you to see the bigger picture. Different experiences yield new perspectives to be shared. The fact that those around the table had very little knowledge of the technicalities of football worked in their favor. They came up with ideas and suggestions that may have seemed out there at first, but these ideas offered an insight into changes that could bring new success. When a diverse group comes together to explore a problem, it may be that some ideas don't work or aren't worth exploring. But this only leads you closer towards another concept that will have a greater chance of success. Even if an idea seems worthless on the surface, exploring it further may bring you closer to the answer. Chapter 5. In a battle of clones versus rebels, the rebels should win. Homophily occurs when a group of people with the same experiences and perspectives comes together. But this doesn't yield results. It is effectively a group of people with cloned ideas. Homophily happens when groups of like-minded people collaborate to solve a problem. Nothing out of the ordinary occurs. However, when a diverse group comes together, ideas are entirely different and come from varying views and experiences. Syed calls these the rebels. These are people who have experienced other things, perhaps even life in completely different locations. In any comparison between the two, rebels should always win. Why? Because the diverse ideas that come from the diverse group have possibilities attached to them. Clone ideas are just a carbon copy of whatever came before. With homogenous groups, people tend to get stuck in the same place. Diverse teams, on the other hand, come up with fresh insights, helping them to become unstuck. Matthew Syed It's very easy for a group to suddenly turn itself clone-like, which is something businesses in particular need to be very mindful of. For example, a business may be keen to employ a diverse workforce, but over time they will mold to the company way. 
and before you know it, they're doing what they need to do to fit in. This pushes innovative ideas to one side and leads to clone-like ideas. The answer is to allow people to be who they are while working with a less rigid set of rules. Increased levels of collective intelligence occur when you have diverse groups within a setting. Chapter 6. Forcing Diversity Doesn't Work These days, many businesses have a diversity quota. They are actively trying to increase the level of diversity amongst their workforce, but their approach is actually working against them. True diversity and diverse ideas cannot be forced. They need to happen naturally. Therefore, recruiting someone simply because they fit the diversity quota is ethically questionable, while not necessarily bringing new ideas to the table. If someone is given a job, they want to know that they succeeded because they were the right person for the role. They were chosen on their merit, not because they ticked a particular box. Diverse teams need to want to come together and create new solutions. It has to be a natural and willing process. The success of a team depends upon a range of different people with diverse experiences and ideas, which can then come together to blend and create solutions that would otherwise have remained hidden away. Put simply, you need to create teams that want to stick together and collaborate. You can't force it to happen in order to tick a box. Did you know, according to a 2015 study by McKinsey & Company, businesses with high ethnic and racial diversity levels are 35% more likely to outperform their competitors in terms of profit. Chapter 7. Good ideas are nothing without communication. It's no good having diverse ideas that can change a situation if they're not communicated. The single biggest block towards effective communication is hierarchical structures. There is a hierarchy within most businesses. However, if that hierarchy is rigid and managers rule by fear, employees won't feel confident or free to discuss problems and develop new and innovative ideas. They're not going to feel comfortable, perhaps questioning something that a person in power suggests, and they're going to simply tow the company line. This completely defeats the object of having rebel ideas in the first place. Dominant managers can cause employees to keep their ideas to themselves. Fantastic ideas are not communicated as a result. If a person has a great idea or a group comes up with a solution that they really believe could work, they have to feel confident enough to voice it. Having too many dominant managers in place who aren't open to new suggestions can completely destroy communication. Instead, group leader who encourages and guides them rather than dominates and squashes ideas before they leave the ground. For rebel ideas to work, you need to have diversity and the right kind of leadership. It's true that one of the most common reasons that people leave a business is poor management. After all, if people feel that they aren't able to express their ideas freely and be taken seriously, why should they stick around? Listening to ideas is one thing, but actually acting upon those that have merit is another. Unfortunately, too many managers are too quick to pass ideas off because they don't fit within a rigid set of rules. But that one idea could be the fix to every single problem the business has. Leaders need to encourage communication and create a sense of safety when suggesting new ideas. Chapter 8. The Dangers of Echo Chambers Failing to recognize the importance of diversity can lead to failure for businesses. But in society, this can contribute towards the formation of groups that do nothing but harm. Syed highlights the problem of white supremacist groups on social media. These people seek out others who have the same views as them and form their own small groups. We've seen throughout history that these groups can cause a huge amount of pain and suffering for other people. We tend to gravitate naturally to those who are the same as us, be brave, and seek out differences to learn more. Diversity opens our eyes to a different perspective and gives us a greater sense of the world with enhanced empathy as a result. It helps us to explore new ideas and come up with solutions through fresh eyes. There is no downside. However, as humans, we tend to move towards those who are similar to us. It's a comfort blanket that makes us feel safe. This is especially the case on university campuses, which is often a time of change for young adults when they want to feel like they belong. As a result, they look for people who are the same as them, who like the same things and have the same background. Syed calls the effects of this an echo chamber. Echo chambers cause you to be stuck in a box. Nothing changes. Everything remains the same and your view is static. We tend to gravitate towards likeness automatically, but this doesn't allow our perspective of the world to change. And as a result, we don't learn anything. Embracing diversity means being open to meeting people from all walks of life and listening, talking, and challenging ideas. By doing this, you learn more about these viewpoints, gain a new view of the world, and connect with others more freely. Conclusion Pulling a diverse group of people together gives you a far greater chance of coming up with a show-stopping solution to solve your biggest problem. If you stick to the same old tried and tested routine, you're never going to crack the code. Sometimes we need to look at things through a fresh pair of eyes. A range of different people trying to solve a problem have a far greater chance of actually cracking the code than one person who thinks in a rigid way. Diverse groups don't necessarily need to have a huge amount of experience in any particular field. They simply require a broader perspective that allows them to see the problem in a different way. However, these groups must be brought together willingly, and all members of the team must be keen to solve the problem. Forcing diversity doesn't work. It causes a blockage of ideas. However, when teams are motivated and fired up, the results can be extraordinary. It's time that society as a whole opened up to appreciate the talents of every single person within it. You don't know whether someone is a potential genius or a creative master simply by looking at them. 
allow every single person you come into contact with to show you what they can do. Every experience that a person goes through shapes who they are and changes how they think. This could also affect how they see problems and formulate solutions they assume to be the best fit. By embracing diversity, anything is possible. Try this. Number one, rather than inviting the same team to brainstorm a problem, consider setting up a focus group of individuals from different departments. Number two, think about your own circle of friends. Do you tend to flock to those who are the same as you? Consider reaching out to those on the fringes of your friendship group. There could be a new and valuable friendship just waiting for you. Number three, when brainstorming, be mindful of not discounting ideas that seem less mainstream. You never know where they may lead.